Uh, yeah, you know, it's a crazy, crazy busy Saturday here on the second to last day of March, right before Easter. There's a million things going on. Um, so, of course, we're doing a really extensive video about baseball. Bear with me. Um, you're getting a public video out of me, even though I said I wasn't doing public videos for baseball, because I have to explain how to update the file for those who purchase it. And I don't want this to be private because there's a lot to talk about in the update process. So let's go through it. Um, this is the first day I was able to get 2024 stats into the algorithm. And I'm going to show you how we incorporate them into the projections and all the different things that you can do with this. We'll start by going over yesterday. Yesterday was a good day. It goes eight and two. Um, this is a slightly different combo distribution than I looked at yesterday. Uh, it, the other one yesterday had Houston a little bit higher up, I think, as the third pick. This moves them down a little bit, which is why I'm using this one for today. Did go eight and two. Does yield 41% profit if you just bet every single one of these games on the money line. That's pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Cleveland annihilates it. Uh, we even get the win out of Seattle uh, last night. The underdog Pittsburgh wins. Like The algorithms in general yesterday had a fantastic day with the exception of the March Madness algorithm, which lost with Houston and lost with Marquette. What are you going to do? Um, but the, the NBA algorithm picked off three underdogs. The NHL algorithm picked off the one game that happened and picked off the underdog. And baseball picked off an underdog. So really excellent day. I'm adding money to the Sprap, um, the Sprap crypto coin because I, I did a crushed it yesterday with us. It was, it was a really, really fantastic day. So baseball did well. So, so things are going good. All right. So let's, let's look at today's version of baseball. Now there are some problems with this. This is, we're now moved into the, the version I have for today. It's showing St. Louis over the Dodgers with a huge margin as the number one pick of the day. The reason why it's showing that is because we have ridiculous pitching stats for the Dodger pitcher. Yoshin, Yoshinobu Yamamoto has already pitched an inning this year because they had a couple games in South Korea um, earlier this year, and he apparently let in five runs, I guess, in one inning pitched. And so his ERA is insane at, at 45. We have his 2024 pitching stats. This is the pitching stat year column right here. We were able to use his 2024 stats because he doesn't have any 2023 stats. So this is what's causing a huge distortion. And these are the kind of things that you have to look for in the file, which is if you see something crazy, look for crazy red or crazy green colors, but especially crazy red colors, because that means something is way, way off. This is unacceptable. He's not going to give up 45 runs today. They're not going to let him stay in the game that long. So what do you do? Well, within the picture sheet, we have a section for uh, simulated stats or historical stats from prior years for pitchers. And now we have automatically being incorporated into the file are the 2024 stats, the connections, the data connection between Rotowire. This actually does work now for 2024 player stats and pitching stats. So you can go to data connection, refresh the, the queries. You can refresh these queries and it's going to bring in the pitching stats and the batting stats, and it's going to automatically add them to the file whenever you refresh that and whenever they update. That's great. So that, that is a nice automatic feature of this file is that two of the stats come in automatically. Well, we need to do something with this pitcher for last year. And so we're going to change that right now. Here's his name. We're just going to make up stats for him because if you go look them up, he's just pitched in Japan or something. He has no MLB stats, so there's nothing you can do. So what are we going to do for him? We're just going to give him – we're going to give him 50 innings pitched. We're going to give him a record of 3-3. Three and three. <laughs> We're going to give him an ERA of 3.5. Or sorry, that's is that the whip? Yeah, ERA 3.5, and we're going to give him a whip of 1.25. And we're going to call it test. And this is poor data practice, unfortunately. Um, we'll, we'll give him we'll give him age 23 and we'll give him six games started. And yeah, like we're just doing something. 
we're calling it test because we have to get these this information somewhat streamlined. So that means that here under his name, we're going to change this from 2024 to the word test. And that's going to bring in these test stats that we are giving him. Let's uh, actually, let's not give him eight innings pitched because that's too many. Let's cut that down to, we'll call it 25 innings pitched there, which will lower his average. And that gives him four, four innings pitched per game. So here's something more reasonable. While it's not accurate, it's at least making this a little bit more standard. And we understand that we have test stats for that pitcher. The only other pitcher that we're not using 2023 stats for for the day is Jared Jones, who only has AAA stats. So these are his AAA stats. So it's just something to note as we analyze the file. Now that we've done that, we can go back and refresh the day pivot sheet. And you're going to see St. Louis is not going to be the number one pick anymore. Yeah, they're now uh, not even favored. So if that pitcher, Yoshido, pitches a reasonable game, yeah, all of a sudden the Dodgers win. And that's why it's important to really dig through all the stats that you see showing here to make sure that you don't have any crazy things like that. So let me back up for a second and talk about the update process and what has happened now. So we have this query for the player batting stats and the uh, pitching stats. That's awesome. That refreshes automatically and feeds into the pitcher sheet, this chunk of pitchers from 2024 pitchers, and it feeds into the batter sheet, which is all of the 2024 batter batting stats. That's great. So another area that you need to add information into now um, is the team pitching and team batting stats. So these two sheets, team batting, team pitching. You get this information from Rotowire under stats, team stats, and they're this one. It's, it's, it's these four that you download the CSVs of. Uh, basic batting, uh, batting advanced, pitching basic, pitching advanced. They You then copy them. They, they can't come in automatically. It doesn't work like the player batting and pitching stats for the players. It doesn't work that way. You have to export it. I've tried to make data connections to it. You need to like connect to Rotowire's API or something. It doesn't work and you got to pay for it. So you got to go to there and grab it automatically. When you do that, you paste them here in this area. You can see that we have last year's stats up top for each of those four different stat categories. We have we have last year's up here. This is for advanced pitching. The advanced pitching for 2024 goes here, and the basic pitching for 2024 goes here. Same logic for the batting sheet, where the advanced batting goes here, and the basic batting goes here. Okay, so those are the two things which I've already brought in for the day. That's going to start to bring in team stats for 2024 into this file. So those are the those are the things that get updated now in addition to the odds sheet when you bring in the odds for the day. And of course, updating your matchup sheet and making it the proper length and looking at the pitcher stat years. So that gets everything. And now let's go to the lineups after we talked about so when you're updating this file, you refresh the queries, then you grab the team pitching and team batting, two, two of those CSVs each, paste them in here. You grab the odds, paste the odds in here. Then you go to the lineups and you paste the lineups in here, which you've probably seen some of the videos about me pasting lineups. Now, sometimes the pitcher name is going to have an abbreviated letter and not the full name. Grayson Rodriguez, for example, was G period Rodriguez is how it was listed in this pivot table. That's because Rotowire abbreviates some of the pitcher's names sometimes. You have to put in the full pitching name here and type it over one of these because it originally said, you know, G period or something. It originally looked like this, like G Rodriguez, basically. When you see how it looks with just G Rodriguez, and you go to the matchup sheet, you're going to see a problem with the lineup factor. Lineup factor is zero for Grace Rodriguez. It doesn't work right if the full name isn't listed. So that's something you have to check for. And I just undid that to put that back in there. When you do that, you see that Grayson Rodriguez, now all of a sudden there's a lineup factor there. So it's important to check your matchup sheet to make sure that you don't have any lineup factors of zero. 
Because if you do, you probably have a pitcher name that is not matching from the odds sheet to the lineup sheet, which was the case. And somebody else also had an abbreviated name today. I believe it was that the Japanese pitcher that's pitching for the Dodgers was just Y Yamamoto. But he's got a lot of issues today, that pitcher. So when you get your pitcher's name straightened out, like you, JP Sears is fine because his name is recorded as JP Sears in the odd sheet. So you see JP Sears is listed as JP Sears. So that works. And he actually has a lineup factor. Just the name has to match from the odds to the lineup sheet. All right. Now, last part of this. So because we have 2024 batting stats and 2023 batting stats, we are now going to start to create a mix to give a, uh, a mixed consolidated ranking for each player. Right now, this early in the season, the formula I have is, is it's giving 20% weight to the new season stats in 2024, and it's giving 80% weight to the stats from 2023. That's what we're doing right now. As 2024 matures, we will start to add a higher percentage to the 2024 stats and a lower percentage to the 2023 stats. We'll do that over the next couple of weeks. And by April 15th, when I send my last email out, you can use 100% of the 2024 stats. Two weeks is enough time to just use current season stats. So that's what this formula is doing here. You can see that what that does is it actually gives a percentage to somebody like Jackson Chorio, who was a new player for Milwaukee. He had a, a pretty good game, I guess, in the first game against the Mets. Gives him a 24% rating for the current season. He doesn't have any rating for 2023 because he didn't play. So now we're at least giving him a little contribution score of 5%. And with somebody like this player, you could actually wait. You could give him the entire 24%. You probably should because he does. He artificially doesn't have any stats from last year. So that's something you can consider doing. Um, we can actually, we can alter that formula. Let's do that right now. Let's do that right. If this equals zero, then we're just going, we're going to add, we're going to take just 2024. Otherwise, we're going to do the, the weighted 20%. Watch this. And watch Jackson Chorio is now going to have 24% when I apply that formula down. Yep. Perfect. So now we've just given every rookie that has played some games in 2024, but didn't play in 2023, we're giving them their true rating from this season. Like Reese Hoskins gets a 6% to play. Here. Great. So let's go back and refresh and see what that did to our projections. Cause that's going to up our lineup factors a little bit appropriately. So let's refresh. Yeah. It changed a couple things a little bit down there. So now we have a reasonable look for the day. And there's something else I'm going to talk about after we talk about the look that we have currently. So this would, would be what I would say is the most accurate look for Saturday. You have Cleveland on top. They've already won two games pretty convincingly against Cleveland. Once again, I cannot believe this line is not minus 200 like it was yesterday. So nothing's going to stop us from thinking that Cleveland is the number one pick of the day again today. Good for them. Dylan Cease is making his first start for San Diego. He was traded from the White Sox last season. Um, they have him up here. Algram has him as a number two pick. Then we've got an underdog in the Cubs over Texas. And then we've got this crazy pitching situation. I would not get involved with this game at all, especially at this minus 210 line. I know St. Louis is not playing well, but with that guy with the ERA of 45 for this year, I would stay away from that. You've got Seattle over Boston, Detroit over the White Sox, Arizona over Colorado, and then the margins start to drop off. But we do have three underdogs down here in Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, and Toronto. So something to note. So this is a pretty good look. You do want to focus up here at the top, avoiding the Dodger game. So it's really these games right here, these six, probably going to be profitable it would be the third day in a row of profitability if it happens this way as the first two days were also profitable. So there's that being said. Now I got something else we could talk about. Within the matchup sheet, right now we're using 2023 
team stats to do these predictions, which is the appropriate year to use because you're only two games into the season for most of these teams. However, you can change this to 2024 now and it will use the 2024 team stats in these predictions. This is going to start to become valuable as we look at the comparisons between this year and last year. So as we did that, let's refresh the day pivot sheet and see what happens. Well, Cleveland's up here. Arizona's way up here. Baltimore is the one that gets the huge bump up here as well. Atlanta's up here. Cincinnati over Washington. Dodgers stay in the same place. These underdogs, Pittsburgh and Milwaukee are up here. It has the Yankees over Houston. So the Yankees flip because they're playing better this season so far. The Cubs are still here. San Diego moves way down. And Tampa Bay's way down. So this is not going to be better than last year's stats, most likely, but we're going to track it. And you'll see that the recap videos I do about this, we're going to look at, well, what did this year's stats do? What did last year's stats do? So that's how easy it is to check. Just change the year right here. And now all of a sudden you're using team stats from that year, which clearly has an impact. Where's Baltimore? Yeah, Baltimore's all the way down here, but Baltimore's more, more favored in current uh, season stats. So that's a really, really extensive how-to tutorial video about how to update this file and all the components that are working together to provide these predictions. Uh, this is the first day we've been able to incorporate 2024 stats. That's what it's doing. So good luck. And may all your picks be winning. Buy a copy on KimBraverman.com and you'll get emails from me. All right, good luck. May all your picks be winning.